Hello, today we'll be covering how to create this modular health bar. As you see, we create this health bar scene that can then be instanced within our player, bat, or our frog, and it automatically starts working. We will learn everything from changing the look of our health bar to updating it live in our game. Displaying health of entities in your game is so important, so let's just get into learning how to create it here in Godot 4. This is part 9 of the tutorial series where we will be creating this exact hack and slash game step by step in Godot 4. If you have any questions regarding errors, understandings, or anything at all, then please let me know in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks and remember to subscribe and drop a like to help you to push this tutorial and this entire series to more aspiring game developers and now let's begin. So the way we're going to go about this is kind of how I mentioned in the intro is we're going to be creating a brand new scene which is going to be our health bar scene and it's going to be a very modular script as we're only going to use variables we're not going to have any numbers done within this script that we're going to create on this scene because it is going to be all basically variables that we're pulled from our bat and our enemy and our frog and everything right any any enemy that you want to have a health bar is going to have three main variables which are, are just two main variables actually which is going to be the max value the min value and i guess the health as well so that's going to be three but to get started we're going to create basically some sort of look for it so we're going to use a progress bar and this progress bar is going to be just named our health bar because that's what it's going to be we can do a little bit of customizing here on it. We can maybe expand it to a rectangle just to see what it looks like. Maybe center it like this so that whenever we are resizing it within our enemies, it's a little bit easier. And some stuff that we're going to want to, I guess, off the bat is we're going to want to turn off our percentage, which is going to be over here on the right. We're going to want to make it like a green and a red. So we can end up going down here to our theme, our theme override, our styles. And then we can change the background here to a... Uh, style box flat and this style box flat can be changed into any color so right now it's gray but we can make maybe for the background color red so it shows the background and then we'll have a green overlay so the green will cover up the red but if there is emptiness within our health bar we're going to end up showing red so it looks like oh well there's no health there and it looks like it's taking damage then we can go down here to the fill style down here and for this fill style we're going to do the exact same thing a new style box flat and we can make this one into green. And what this is going to do is if we come to our health bar and we come up here to the very top, we can change our value of our health bar. If we do 60, you're going to see, oh, well, it looks like it's 60% full and it has red and it has green. So it's a little bit customized and it's not going to be as plain as it would. And right now we can just set that to zero because we'll set everything here in just a second. We can save this scene. Just like that. And then we're in this is going to be no other nodes. This is the only node that's going to be in the entire game or in the entire scene. We're going to end up adding a script to this, which is going to be our healthbar.gd. And within the script is going to be some things that we're going to need. So basically, what are variables that we're going to need? Well, we're going to need the parent. What are we actually using? What is the health of our parent and everything like that? What scene is this instance within, right? Then we can say, okay, well, var the max value amount. So however max the the max is so it looks different for each one because for example our frog has 80 health but our bat has you know less so that's how that works and our player has 100 so for it to look even for it looks to, for it to be like oh well 20 percent of the health is gone it's going to be different for every single enemy in our game so that's why we do this then here in our ready function we're going to end up basically getting this these we're going to set these from our parent so in our toxic frog if we go up here to the very top you're going to see that we have health max health or health max and we have health min in our bat enemy we have the same thing we have health max health min and our health so health min is zero that's going to be the same for almost all of them our health max is equal to 50 so our bat has 50 health as its maximum and our frog is going to end up having over here just 80 health and our player is going to have these same exact variables but we have 100 max health, uh, zero, and then, but so basically, as you can see, it's going to update the max health and the min health for each scene or node that it is on, right? So if it's on the player, it's going to be different than the toxic frog. And if it's on the bat, it's going to be different than the toxic frog and the player, and so on, so on, right? But it'll make more sense when we all get it together and we have all the code written out. So we can say, okay, well, what is our parent variable going to be equal to? Well, our parent variable is going to be equal to our get parent here. And that's just going to be that. It's going to be our parent because we're going to instance it within that scene. Then we can say, okay, well, our, vax, our max value amount is going to equal the parent dot health 
max, right? Then we can say, okay, well, our min value amount is going to equal our to our parent dot uh, health min, right? And then that's going to be for our ready function. Then we can create a process function, and in this process, in this process function here. So I spelled this completely wrong, but we can say delta. So in our process, we can end up saying, okay, well, if our parent dot health is not equal to the max health, right? The max health value, then what do we want to happen? Well, if it's not equal to the max health, then we want it to be visible because if it is equal to the max health, then we do not want it to be visible because if it's equal to 100%, then we want it to be invisible because there's no point of seeing it. It's extra clutter on our screen. Well, let's say our health is 80%, then we need to display that to our player somehow. So we can say, okay, well, let's make it visible. So we can say self.visible equals true. And then we can say under here, well, maybe we have one more thing. If it's equal to zero, we also want it to be not visible. So, okay, well, let's check. Okay, well, if parent.health is equal to the min value, this is the only exception, then we can say, okay, self.visible is going to e equal to false and then down here we can also say else and self dot visible equals false now if we were to play this everything should come together as long as we go over to our player scene and we actually instance this within our player right so we can say okay well health bar we can instance it it's going to be huge we can always resize it to whatever size that we are going to want just like so we click lobby level we click play what's going to happen you're going to see that it's going to be visible, which is not good. If we jump down here, though, you're going to see that it's still going to be visible. And the health bar is not updating. So we're not pulling it from directly from the player, which, of course, is not good in the slightest. So if we go to our player, let's see if we are having anything weird happening. But we are pulling the parent. The parent is dot get parent, which is right. Parent dot health is going to be. Let's see. Make sure the player's health is called health. It is called health. Let's do some debugging by saying, okay, well, let's print our parent dot player health, right? I, I guess I guess it'd be parent dot health. Let's print our parent dot health and let's see what happens, right? We join in. We're going to end up printing absolutely nothing. So we're never calling this function. So that's that's where our issue hits, right? And why is that? Well, our process here. We don't have any underscore in front of it, so it's never actually calling our process function. And that is a very simple debug that went actually pretty smooth. So that was an easy debug. Now if we click play, you can see it's going to end up calling that function now. And we are going to end up disappearing it when we have 100% health. We jump down, we still have 100% health, but it should update whenever we start to hit on these enemies. So we jump up, we get hit. It's going to end up updating to zero right so we're updated to zero and that's because we're never actually updating our health bar so to actually update our health bar we can call that within our script by going to our process and we can say well self dot value is going to equal that of the parent dot health right as we already set our max value and our min value we just need to update the actual value itself right so now if we were to click play everything should hopefully work perfect Let's get hit by one of these bats. And you're gonna see we're going to end up slowly taking damage from them and we're going to end up decreasing damage as they start to attack us more and more. And that looks actually really good. Now we're gonna end up being able to easily add this in within all of our other uh, enemies and stuff like that by just instancing our health bar, resizing it based on whatever the enemy is, right? So this is our frog, so we can instance it with like this. And then we can go over to our bat. We can do the exact same thing. Just instance it within our scene and resize it. And you're going to see how modular this is for every other enemy that you may have. Maybe the bat, we want it to be really small since the bat's small. Then we click play. Now let's see what happens if we hop into our game. You're going to see our player, no health bar. Our bats are going to come down, no health bar. But once we hit some of the bats, you're going to see that their health bar is going to end up updating. And since their health bar is so small, it's going to be basically a two hit to kill these bats and they have a working health bar. We have a working health bar. The frog's gonna end up having a working health bar when they spawn into the game. 
when they do spawn into the game, which is going to happen right now. If we hit this guy, you're going to see his health bar is end up working. That's a double attack, double attack, double attack, and double attack. He's going to explode. All these people's health bar is going to end up working. Look at all the bats with their health bar. Look at all the frogs with their health bar. And our player is going to end up getting a little glitch, which is a basically a simple one. We can just set our velocity that X to zero whenever we die to stop that little glitch. But everything like that works and it looks very, very good. So this script is modular, so it works anywhere as long as you have those three variables and you're pulling them from the parent node, right? So all you have to do is instance it into your scene, resize it based on however you want it to look, and it works perfect. So that is how you create a health bar. That is kind of how you create an updating health bar, and I hope you were able to learn something here today. I want to thank you so much for watching, and it really does mean the world. I hope you were able to learn. If you have any questions, then please let me know in the comments, and I will be sure to explain it in some other way to help you understand better. But thank you so much for watching, and until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.